Just imagine how your career would skyrocket if you were a marketing manager and you could quantify the impact of mobile, video, and other forms of digital marketing on your business. And if you were able to increase the return on advertising spend, or ROAS, of mobile and video to the same level of magazines, if you could do that, you would be a marketing superstar. And you would be famous throughout the marketing world. Unfortunately, it seems that doing that is more easily said than done. But the more we know about the challenge, the better insights we have into the possible answers to that challenge. And the more valuable you and I will be as managers in the digital age. So to develop that insight, let's move on to the third hard data question we might ask about marketing today. And that question is, what is the return of investments, or ROI, for each of the different kinds of marketing activities today? This, in fact, is the most challenging question we will address in this boot camp marketing session. But we'll try our best and we'll probably answer most of it. To try and answer the question, though, we'll try to rely on the data available. But when doing that, we should all keep in mind that this data is aggregate, or in other words, generalized, because each company is unique. These data findings are not necessarily the answer to every company's unique marketing challenges. So please keep that in mind. Every company is unique. And some data is better than others, but then some data is better than no data at all. So the question we just asked was, what is the ROI or return on investment for each different kind of marketing activity? Well, to partially answer that question, we'll rely on the most recent research by Deloitte, Duke University, and American Marketing Association. Based on the findings of that research, the ability to measure the impact of marketing, or ROI, on marketing in business is not very good. And the reason we say that is because the Deloitte, Duke, American Marketing Association research showed that 20% of CMOs cannot prove the impact of marketing. And a further 47% can only prove some qualitative impact. In other words, they can't be quantified. And just 33% of CMOs said that they can prove the quantitative impact of marketing. Hmm, that's interesting indeed. CMO, by the way, means Chief Marketing Officer in a company, so that would be the highest level marketing person in a corporation or company. So where does that leave us? Well, there is some other data which might help us to understand more about marketing return on investment by area. For example, the Advertising Research Foundation, or ARF for short, has been carrying out a cross-industry research project for more than 10 years. And in that research, they track TV, online, video, mobile advertising for 500 CPG brands. And by CPG brands, we mean consumer packaged goods companies like Coca-Cola, Pepsi, etc. So, what have the ARF discovered about marketing ROI or in AF, ARF's terminology, ROAS, or Return on Advertising Spend. Well, the ARF research shows that the return on advertising spend is highest for, well, before we give some hard data on that question, what do you think? Which area or sector of marketing do you think has the highest return on investment or return on advertising spend? Marketing. Well, according to the ROAS research, magazines have the best ROAS. And that's followed by display ads, which are displayed on the computer or in other places, you know, online, at around 30% lower performance than magazines. Cross-media, which means combining several advertising media and TV, are performing around 30% lower than at magazines. 
Mobile has a 38% lower performance than magazines. Digital video has about a 40% lower performance than magazines. So magazines are number one on return on advertising spend. What this means in practical terms is that for every one dollar spent on magazine advertiser, advertising, advertisers estimate that something like $3.94 is achieved in sales. Hmm, interesting indeed. What this data tells us is that marketing managers need to figure out and understand better what the benefits are of marketing and that they must begin to understand the numbers. They must also make sure that their creative output is the best it can be if they wish to drive sales in digital channels. But even more importantly, marketers need to figure out how to leverage data and measurement more because this is the only way to inform their media decisions. And they must figure out how to benefit more from digital channels as that is where consumers are spending most of their time today. So marketers have not figured out how to effectively manage digital channels. And finally, the last hard data question we might ask you today is, what should or could be the three strategic marketing priorities for companies in general today? Now think for a minute about that question. What would be your answer? The three strategic marketing priorities. Well, in the Deloitte Duke University American Marketing Association study we referred to earlier, the strategic marketing activity spending by companies today breaks down as follows. 50% of their marketing budget for developing and strategic activities is on market penetration. 23% is on product and service development, 16% on market development, and 11% on diversification. Well, based on this data, we can see that marketers are currently focused most on penetrating existing markets rather than growing markets. And these findings are supported by a 2016 Salesforce.com study of some 4,000 full-time marketing leaders in North America, Europe, Asia, etc. Those 4,000 marketing leaders said that their top three strategic priorities were one, 35% said customer satisfaction, two, 33% said revenue growth, and three, 24% said their priority was customer acquisition. From this data, and by looking farther on the horizon, we can see from the Salesforce.com results that the strategic marketing priorities, which every manager should be aware of, are Lesson number one, customer engagement. Because customer engagement is becoming increasingly important. And we say this because increasing customer engagement was listed as a top priority by 34% of the marketing leaders in that research. And following that, we could say that increasing social media engagement is critical because it was listed as a top priority by 25% of those marketing leaders. So engagement, social media engagement. The second lesson from the data in this research is that digital will take a larger and larger and larger share of marketing budgets by 2021, marketers will spend 75% of their total budget on digital marketing. But first, they desperately need to justify those investments and figure out how to measure them, the impact of them, etc. Despite all the hype and surrounding email campaigns, digital engagement, and so on, some marketers still need to remember that the in-store experiences still matter because marketers are also thinking beyond channels like digital, TV, etc. And they're increasingly trying to understand how to create moments of enjoyment for their customers. And the reason marketers are doing this is because they know that the company who can create moments of joy for their customers 
will be the company who will be the winner in the digital age. And sometimes creating those moments of joy requires face-to-face -face contact, and this is where the in-store experience is also important. Wow! That was a lot. And to end this session, we'll pull all of these hard facts together into six simple rules. Rule one, marketers need to collect data around customer touch points, etc. Two, marketers need to detect patterns in the data. Three, marketers need to begin to conducting experiments to fine-tune their investment choices. Four, marketers need to create a formula to determine with confidence where to invest, the synergies, etc., over a period of time, and how much to put into each area relative to the others. Five, marketers need to be sure that the formula explains and predicts the outcome or the cause and effect. And finally, number six, marketers need to accept complexity, especially because of the growth in multi-channel, omni-channel marketing in the future.